Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. What is the weekend us to another bright new day with all its opportunities for isn't it? So let us rejoice and be glad in it. sentence on page 32 and continues on page 35 and following. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Blessed be the Lord, our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Venite, O oh, come let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We come to this point where we have this opportunity to make ourselves right with God. Let us confess our sin and ask for God's forgiveness. And so we pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, the psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 37, verses 1 to 18. Our psalm begins on page 513 of our Books of Common Prayer. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. 
Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. Their sword shall go through their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. The little that the righteous has is better than great riches of the wicked, for the power of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. First reading from the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the Israelites, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they be with you, for they will surely incline your heart to follow their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. Among his wives were 700 princesses and 300 concubines, and his wife turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wife turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not completely follow the Lord as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Shemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives who offered incense and sacrificed to their gods. Then the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this matter, that he should not follow other gods, but he did not observe what the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Since this, abomi since this has been your mind, and you have not kept my com covenant and my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. We turn to the canticle song a song to the lamb on page 53 of our books of common prayer splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right o lord our god for you created everything that is and by your will they were created and have their being and yours by right o lamb that was slain for with your blood you have redeemed for god from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so that him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worshipped and praised 
dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come to our second reading from the Gospel of Mark. We are reading from verses 12 to 21. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple crook, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple crook and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. reflect on this passage that we have just read from the Gospel of Mark. It's chapter 15. We read from verses 12 to 21. It's all about Jesus' trial at midnight, early hours of the morning, by the chief priests and high priests and all these officials. And then they're sending him to Pilate because they really had no authority to pass a death sentence. So he had to go to Pilate. And they had to convince Pilate, who is a Roman governor, to declare the death penalty. And there are all these, you know, machinations, because this man must die, you know. They, they see nothing more than a challenge to their own authority, and he must go. And you know, when you look at, you know, when you look at the whole picture, I can tell you, all I can think about is God, you know, God is going to be working out his plan regardless of what our human beings might seek to do. So Pilate and the chief priest and high priest and all these officials, they're but bit players in, in what I would just label as God's great plan of salvation. God had a plan, and that plan meant that his son would come to earth, teach and live a life, train young people who will be left after him, and he must die on the cross, that you and I might have salvation, we might be saved from the consequences of our sin. That is God's plan. So all these people and all the machinations, it, it's really, they're just <laughs> pawns, as it were. They think of themselves as so powerful, you know, and doing their will, but indeed they're mere pawns in that great drama we might call it, of God's plan of salvation. And it leads us to think quite a lot, eh? quite a lot. 
that, you know, when we look around what's going on in the world, how do we see it? You know, do we see God's hand somewhere, some larger purpose? Of course, in, in, the, in what we are reading today, what we just read today, the high priest and they thought that they were, they were affecting their plan. Little did they know. So when we look around at the world and all that's happening, wars and rumors of wars and all kinds of things, you know, people are suffering all over the place. We have dictators, we, we have so many coups taking place nowadays. You know, we have oppressive governments, you have individuals and, you know, communities, you know, who are taking advantage. There's so much crime going on in our country. You know, you know, what are we to do? I think that we are called to, to, you know, to look on at what's going on and seek God's guidance. To do what it, what we perceive as God is calling us, what we perceive God is calling us to do and to do our part. And in this respect, I think of, you know, Simon of Cyrene. This Simon from in this North African part, from North Africa, that part called Cyrene. Coming, you know, perhaps he came to, it was Passover time, perhaps as a good Jew, convert or what have you, he just came. And there he, he finds himself in the middle of this drama. He is called to, co to, to carry the cross of Jesus. Now we know how sweet Jesus was. He was to die on the cross, not die on the way. <laughs> to, you know, to, 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 to the hill of Calvary. He was to die on the cross. So Simon was the one, and we might say, who would relieve him of that burden and retain the last bit of strength that he would have so that indeed he would reach the, the hill of Calvary and be crucified there. So here's Simon from way in North Africa, finding himself in Jerusalem and being on the spot where he's called upon to carry the cross of Jesus, to save him as it were, to save his death until it really ought to happen. Simon, another player in God's plan of salvation. You know, who are we to see? You know, it, it, tell, it teaches us a lot. When we look around at what's happening in the world, what is God really doing? And what is God calling, what part is God calling us to play, each of us to play in the midst of whatever his overall plan is. Like Simon, fitting in, fitting into the whole scheme of things. How are we to fit in? I think we are called to be very reflective persons, prayerful persons, and seeking God's guidance and perceiving what he's calling us to do in the midst of all of this. It seems like confusion, but God is, clearly God is in charge as he was in that whole drama of Jesus' you know, trial and crucifixion and his whole life, you know, as a matter of fact. What is God doing? One thing is certain as the hymn writer tells us, God is certainly working his purpose out. We who are the faithful, we who are the faithful must seek to discern the role that God is calling us to play. And the role we must play is a role of faithfulness, I would believe. Whatever it is, we must be faithful, discern what God is calling us to do, and faithfully do it, and persevering, persevering in what we discern that God is calling us to do, so that we might play our own part in what it is. Now, we may not be completely aware, but God is going to be moving us as we, as we move in faith under God's direction. God will be moving us to what we ought to do, what we ought to respond how we ought to respond. And when we have that sense of God calling us to do whatever it is, we must do it with perseverance. We must do it faithfully. We must continue to do what we discern God is calling us to do. We must be strong and faithful. We must be called to suffering. Yes. The disciples in their you know, calling, they were called to suffering. Simon was called to carry that heavy cross. We may be called to helping others, and we are always called to do that. We may, be, we may be called to be more active in spreading the good news. We may be called to persecution ourselves as we live out and we respond to what we think God is calling us to do. You know? And um, we have to go to new places. One of the things we notice is with the, with the early disciples, after when persecution starts in one place, they just... You know, they, they, they flee persecution, but then when they go to a new place, there the gospel is spread to another place. So again, God's purpose is being worked out. 
and it's for us to discern in the midst of what seems like terrible things happening. God's purpose somehow is being worked out. We must seek to discern what God is calling us to do. And we must, we must do it faithfully. And this is really f- cause for a lot of faith because we just don't know. We, we ourselves might be asking, what is God doing? Why is God doing this? Might be the questions we are asking. But yes, we may never get the answer. We have to trust God that in the midst of all that's happening there, God is in the midst of it working his purposes out. And we are called to faithfully discerning what God is calling us to do and to do it, to be sources of help and hope and strength in the midst of what seems to be just evil. And we could imagine those early believers, what they felt in the midst, caught up in all of this, unable to do anything. We know some of them disappeared. (laughs) And, you know, we just had Jesus' mother and a few women and, and John at the cross. Others disappeared, you know. Simon came from nowhere. He had to carry the cross. It's real, you know. So there's, there is, you know, all kinds. Of, there are all kinds of reactions. But whether we are like this, like Simon called out of nowhere to do something important, you know, whether we are called just to be there to be strong, like Mary and the woman and and John, you know, whatever we perceive God is calling us to do, let us do it and be agents of God's purposes, fit in with God's plan for whatever God has in mind for our world in our times. The Lord be with you.
Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to our collect for the, for the day. And our collect is found on page 177, the collect for Papa 17. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us through religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in prayer. O God, the lover of unity and author of peace, to know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all the souls of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a bright new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may, we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we pray for people everywhere in every part of God's world. Especially we pray for those who have to exist day by day under difficult conditions, under conditions of natural disasters, under conditions of oppressive governments, under conditions where there is war and destruction and all kinds of situations, Lord, that bring harm and hurt and discomfort to others. We pray your very presence, Lord, and especially for your people in the midst of those situations. Give them strength and courage and help them to be sources of hope and help to others. We continue to pray for your church worldwide. We pray for all ministers of your word and sacraments in our own church, the Anglican Communion, we pray for the primates in all the provinces of our communion. And we pray especially for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury. In our own church of the province of the West Indies, we pray for Howard, our Archbishop, who is also Bishop of Jamaica. We pray your guidance and inspiration upon him. We pray as well for your guidance and inspiration on all the bishops of the various dioceses of our province, and especially we pray for our own Bishop Claude, Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago. Bless him, bless his family and loved ones. Continue to inspire his leadership of the church in this place. We lift up all our clergy, guide and inspire them in their work. Help us all to so inspire our people in the service that your name, Lord, will be known and honored in all parts of this country of ours. May we truly represent you in the world. We continue to pray for those you have put in authority over us, our president, prime minister, ministers of government, members of parliament, and all those in positions of authority in both private and public sectors. For the decision makers, we pray for inspired decisions in the interest of all. For those who deliver the services in both private and public sectors, we pray for but true, a genuine concern for others and a desire to go the extra mile to deliver the services which they are called to deliver. 
we continue to pray for all our people in this country. Help us to understand, Lord, that you've put us here to live in love with one another, to reach out to one another, hands of help and hope. Strengthen us, Lord, in this attitude as we live together in this place that you've put us. We pray for an end to the crime, Lord, and all the hurt and pain that comes from crime. For an end to all the murders, the, wan the wanton taking of life. Touch hearts and minds, Lord, of all our people. And give us that respect for you, who are the creator of all that is. We continue to pray for all our people this morning who are in situations of any kind of need. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones. For those who have suffered other kind of loss, loss of jobs, loss of hope and the whole, loss of property. We pray for those who are sick and are crying out for healing, for doctors and nurses and medical personnel who work together to bring healing to those who are ill. We pray for them. We pray for our schools recently reopened for principals and teachers and students and for the parents of the students, all those who work in the system. We pray that they will be of one mind, which is to, to help our young people to be nurtured into the fullness of the potential with which you have made them. We pray for senior citizens, losing some of their physical and mental abilities and in need of help as they go along in their daily life for the, the poor, the needy, in all kinds of ways. Help us to have open eyes and generous hands, Lord, as we reach out to assist. For people, young people in particular, at this time, Lord, we lift them up. We pray for all those who have a hand in shaping them, parents, adults in the community, other influential persons. We pray that their concern will be for the best interest of these young people, and they will work under your inspiration to mold them into their true potential. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray the prayer of dedication on page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.